you have a 90% win rate and a 1 to 3 risk to reward ratio? The answer is no. And uh, But a lot of people believe that you can have high win rates and really good high risk to reward ratios. And I'm going to explain to you right now why it's not true. Okay. Um, unfortunately, you can't have your cake and eat it. <laughs> Usually, um, uh, you can have a, a, a strategy with a higher risk to reward ratio, let's say at one to three as an average, which is really good. Um, but normally the, what accompanies that is a lower win rate. So I, I would argue normally 40% win rate or less um, is typical with that type of thing, which is still highly profitable um, trading strategy. But you can't get both and the reason you can't and I'm going to go through some absolute numbers with you in a moment but one of the reasons you can't is that you imagine if I bring the pen up here if you imagine you get into a trade here and your average stop loss is um, here and so your target is three times that up here so the market's got to go all this distance to get up to here now by the very f very fact that markets ebb and flow, what will happen in a lot of those occasions is it won't go that far. Um, but it might get there eventually, but um, quite often it will come back down and in its normal ebb and flow of price act activity, but that will be enough to stop you out. And that's why you tend to, in, if you want a high you know, win rate, um, a high risk reward ratio, that you're going to have... Um, lots of stop outs because it all, even if it comes up for a bit and then it'll roll over. That's the natural flow of things. Um, they don't, not every push just keeps going. Now, let me explain to you now why um, and why this is a fact. And if it was true that you could have one, two, three um, risk reward ratios and a 90% uh, risk reward, 90% uh, win rate what would ha what would be the consequences so let's go through that so um okay i've written down on okay so let's say you had 10,000 pounds okay you got 10,000 pounds or dollars whatever doesn't matter 10,000 in your account so let's say dollars for argument's sake and you've got a 1 to 3 risk reward ratio um and a 90% win rate so with a 90% win rate you can afford to risk 2% of your account balance per trade, yeah? Okay, so let's go with 2%, not 1%. So on every trade, you're risking 2%, okay, per trade. That means on the winning trades, um, that's 2% times 3, so 1 to 3 risk-reward ratio, to, so times 3, so you're risking 2. Multiply that by 3, gives you a 6% gain per trade, okay? And um, so let's assume that... You're doing 10 trades a month. It's okay. 10 trades per month. 10 trades per month here. Okay. So if we do the maths on that, that gives us one loser um, out of those 10 trades. So one times minus 2%. And it gives us nine winners at 6% per winner, which is plus 54%. Okay, so that gives us a gain, a monthly gain of 52%, okay, 52% monthly gain, all right, so that, uh, work, so it's, I don't know, what, compounded, oh god, I don't even know what the compounded figure is uh, if you annualized it, but if you just didn't even compound, then you're, you're looking at uh, over 600% a year, okay, all right, every year. So, um, but anyway, now now I've what I've done is I've taken a calculator, I've taken a compounding calculator, just to give you an idea. If I just uh, turn that off and then bring it back on again, of what that actually means. So, if you were to make uh, fifty two percent a month um, on your ten thousand, on your on that ten thousand, at the end of year one. You will have turned that ten thousand into a hundred and fifty-two thousand pounds, or whatever dollars, whatever, um, into a hundred and fifty-two thousand. Then you're going into year two, making fifty fifty-two percent a year, uh, sorry, a month um, at year two. So at the end of year two, that leaps up to twenty-three million 
23, I'll just put million there. Now, where it gets really interesting is that by, sorry, put the year two there, by year three, oops, by year three, you've then uh, turned that into, I'm looking at off screen, if I can see the box, uh, 3.5 billion pounds at the year, uh, just, at, just three years into this, you're now in the richest, I don't know what percentage of people in the world, you've done that in three years. And do you really want to know what it's at at the end of year four? <laughs> it's at 535 billion pounds. <laughs> okay, uh, hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. Um, if one to three risk reward ratios coupled with 90% win rates were readily available, there would be countless multi billionaires all around the world from trading. Don't get me wrong, there are billionaires from trading, but I don't recall seeing any uh, billionaire with 500 billion. Uh, I think the richest man in the world is worth about, it's Elon Musk, isn't it? About 188 billion at the moment. Um, you would have, and these these fund managers and the likes have been trading for countless decades. They would be good trillion trillionaires, you know. So it doesn't work. That's the reality. It doesn't work. It's not. It wouldn't be scalable. I'm not even talked about scalability of of that type of thing. So um, my point is, you can't have your cake and eat it. You can make really good returns, really good returns with either a 90% win rate. But then normally what happens if you've got a 90% win rate, then your risk to reward ratio is way lower in order to have a 90% a, a win rate. To be right that often, what often normally happens is larger stop and smaller target. That's how you can get to being uh, having a high win rate because you need to have the larger stop, give it plenty of room to breathe and not asking too much for it to get to that target. That's how you can create high win rate strategies. Or you go for a high risk reward strategy, but then that'll give you a lower win rate. Hopefully that's given you some food for thought here this coming this weekend. I'm recording this Friday afternoon actually, but this will go out over the weekend. Take care for now. I'll see you next week.